This is the Super Bowl of culinary competitions. And you've got a front row seat. That's right, so grab some chips because we are rocking the walk today on Sous Vida. Oh yeah, thanks. Welcome back to Subida. I'm J.R. Cardenas. And I am Vanessa Ramirez. We are at Rock the Guac, an event that pits, <laughs> pun ah. intended, the Valley's top chefs to see who can concoct the most creative guacamole. Oh, yeah. Now, the basic ingredients are good enough, but you put that next to a chef, and the end result is a work of art. Yes, just like a rock that turns into a gem. Take a look. There's something about turquoise. It's got a magic to it. According to the Library of Congress, turquoise is the first gemstone ever used by man. Every culture in the world holds it in a very high regard. There's so much variety. When you look at a piece of turquoise, it's the color that grabs you, and that's the one that's calling to you. That's your stone. This is something special, very personal. Every stone is different. We treat each stone like it's the last piece of turquoise left in the world. We're on what they call Turquoise Mountain. So if you start up there on top, you see a fault line. Turquoise is a secondary replacement where the ground cracks. In over billions of years, water percolates down and collects all the metals and minerals, copper, aluminum, phosphorus that's in turquoise, and it becomes a liquid solution that solidifies into a stone. That vein of turquoise starts all the way up on top of that mountain. As it goes right down, it'll just continue changing color. The deeper we go, the more compact, the more pure and solid the turquoise is. So, here we've got it exposed. Now you can see the material as it exists in the ground. Every day you're mining, it can be a big surprise. All of this type of turquoise is a complete different structure and color than the large vein right here. Every piece of turquoise is different that comes out of here. Every day you don't know what you're gonna find. Every day is a new adventure. My grandfather cut his first stone in 1929. He was an inventor, he was a contract miner, mined some of the more famous mines known in the world today. He had all the lapidary patents on the automatic cutting equipment in the 1960s in the United States. He was able to put all these things together and created the business that we have today. And then my father, then myself, and then now with, with my son Josh and his four boys, the passion is even stronger knowing that what I'm doing is gonna continue on. The Kingman turquoise is very special for one main reason. We get every color of green and blue there is. We set the standards for the whole industry. Everybody is trying to reach our level of innovation, new ideas, new product lines. We have the rough material, we have the natural, we have the stabilized, cut stones, everything you need to make your own jewelry. We also have finished jewelry. We are a one-stop shop for turquoise. It's a handcrafted product. We guarantee what we have, we back it up, we are the oldest family in the world that does what we do. Hey, when we come back, we're going to be talking to the defending champion of this great event, Rock the Guac. Mm -hmm. So, Vida, we'll be right back after these messages. And, JR, you cannot get enough of Tarbell's sweet treat. What is this called? Buñuelos. Oh, my gosh. Oh, this isn't Buñuelos. That's a Buñuelo. Ah, oh, this is. Got it. I need more Buñuelos. You're watching Subida, your life, brought to you by Chicanos por la Causa. Hey guys, welcome back to Subida. I'm here with champion chef Forrest Hamrick from the Fairmont Scottsdale Princess. He's here to defend his title one last year at the Guacamole Fest. And uh, tell me, first off, how'd you learn how to make this guacamole? Tasting, tasting, tasting. Why don't you teach the people at home how to make this delicious guacamole? Very simple, very few ingredients, very fresh. Uh, we have some awesome seedless watermelon. Sandia. Still, sandia, still very sweet. We made a little syrup here with agave. Okay. We did um, Roca Patron uh, silver tequila, mm. little lime juice and a little salt. So we're just gonna season the nice and thick, just kind of like miel. Very nice. Just gonna put a little bit in the sandia, 
just to flavor it. And this is basically kind of going to be your base. This is going to go on top of the our prepared guacamole that we made. Okay. So this is just going to go right here on top. And then what we're going to do is we're going to finish it with the rest of the ingredients. We're going to season it with a little tajin. Oh, tajin. You can't go wrong with tajin. And salt, right? And then we're going to take some queso fresco. Los Altos queso fresco. Oh, very nice. Cremosa. It's delicious. Watermelon and cheese go hand in hand together. Oh, I didn't know that. Then after that, we're going to garnish it with some pepitas. Crunchy, salty, lemony. And then for some killer color, look at these beautiful red rubies. These jewels of pomegranate seeds just go right on top. You know, we should just dedicate a whole show to how you make your guacamole. Can I sample this? Absolutely, please okay, do. Okay, my, 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 my mouth is really, really watery. All right, so let's, uh, let's see what this is all about, ladies and gentlemen. Mmm, mmm. Mmm. You know what? I didn't get a full sample. Listen, we're gonna get to send it over to Vanessa. We're gonna thank you for this. Absolutely. Best of luck on this year. Thank you very much. All right, guys. We're gonna see what this tastes like. Vanessa, what's up? Chef Hamrick is proof that when your passion is strong, the results are always positive. Here's another artist that's passion is working with steel, and the results are just as tasty. I'm Jake Floyd. I'm the owner of Purgatory Industries. And uh, I love cars. I do consider myself an artist. Uh, we don't like uh, factory at all. We like to change things and uh, make things as cool as possible and as fast as possible. We, we work on hot rods, classic cars, um, bikes, kind of anything with a motor and wheels, we like to mess with it. When working on custom hot rods, it's, it's more than just replacing parts. A lot of times you can't get the parts uh, that you're looking for on some of these old cars, so you have, to, you have to make them or you have to modify something else to make it work. Very seldom can you just order up uh, a part for, say, a 1929 Dodge. It just doesn't exist. So you gotta think outside the box and get creative and find a way to make something else work. My process to creating a custom car, it kind of evolves. Um, it's a lot of conversations with the owner, if there is an owner, and it, it just, uh, it's an evolution. Most customers don't really know what they want from the beginning, so it's a lot of discussions, bouncing ideas off of each other, and coming up with a final design that, that everybody's happy with, uh, that meets everybody's budget. Making something by hand from nothing feels pretty amazing. Taking raw sheet metal, forming it, stretching it, bending it, shaping it, into what we're looking for is, is, is instant gratification. When, when you see that part on the car and you see that car customized the way that you had it visioned in your head, it, it's like nothing else. It, it feels amazing to create something by hand. You know, we, we get these old cars in, some of them aren't even cars. We've, we've gotten cars in that were parts of cars in the back of the truck. And then putting that together and forming that into a car I mean, it's just, it's just crazy to think that, you know, this, this pile of parts were sitting in a field for 50 years and now it's on the road. And, uh, you know, that's, that's amazing, bringing things back to life. So when a client sees their finished product, um, usually they get a little teary-eyed, they give me a hug, they're just, they just kind of get taken back. They, uh, they get uh, very emotional when they see these, because a lot of these cars, they've had for many, many years. They've been in the family for many years. They mean a lot to them. So when they actually see that car back to its you know, original glory, if we're doing a restoration, or back to you know, what they had visioned in their, in their head all these years, and now it's real, and they can sit behind the wheel and drive it, I mean, they just, words can't really describe how they, how they react. They just get very emotional and uh, they're, they're very appreciative of, of what we did for them. I just love what I do. I, I love taking something that looks like rusty, a piece of a car, and put it on the road, and bring it back to life. Something that was forgotten, and beat up, and abused over the years, and bring new life back into it. I saved these cars. 
I save these cars from rotting away. I save the cars from just being forgotten, you know? And I save uh, uh, the memories that people had in some of these cars. I, I give that back to them. People make art out of everything. Wrestlers, metal, food. Flesh. What? Yeah, tattoos. Tattoos. Yes, the art can be so beautiful. They have a festival for it. Really? Yeah, take a look. Wow, how many tattoos do you have? So here at the Biltmore, you know, it's, it's very elegant. It's a very luxurious resort and spa. And uh, the convention goes on here in the Frank Lloyd Wright Ballroom. So it's a good uh, combination of, you know, art um, with the Biltmore and with tattooing. We couldn't be happier that they allow uh, the Hell City Tattoo Festival to be here. Let's go. Back in the day, tattooing wasn't accepted. You know, it, it was uh, a stigmatic thing with society and it had a, a certain cliche to it. Being here at the Biltmore, it's definitely allowed us to rise above those cliches and, and show tattooing in a, a luxurious, more of an elegant form that people can accept and relate to nowadays. Let's go. Hell City is just a gathering of artistic minds, essentially. It's people that love the, uh, the art of tattooing. Uh, tattoo artists here are also painters, so it's just a, it's a collection of people that love body art and just fine art in general. Uh, at Hell City, we have like a, a unique tattoo convention, actually. Uh, we have tattoo competitions, uh, burlesque shows, freak shows, educational seminars as well for the public and for the tattoo artists. Uh, there's just a lot of unique events that we have going on here overall. Tattoos have always been a mark of individuality and it's, uh, it's a great way for somebody to express what they're into, what they like, you know, what they want to wear. Um, today we're seeing tattooing, um, you know, it's growing, it's being more accepted. Um, you're seeing your athletes, your actors, a lot of people wearing tattoos. So um, the culmination of all that has definitely uh, raised, a, a, created a spark within tattooing. Back in the day, you would see people, and it, tattooing had somewhat of a stigma to it. So it wasn't as accepted as it is nowadays. It wasn't on television to see everybody being able to like actually step into the studio to see kind of what it's like, you know, to see that it's like a lot of young artists, a lot of creative minds, and things like that. So I think the identity of tattooing has changed nowadays, and it's created a, a greater acceptance for it, um, just within you know society, within the workplace, things like that. Uh, and like I was saying, like. Athletes, actors, all, all kinds of people you wouldn't think would have tattoos back in the day, they're now tattooed because it's more accepted. Um, you know, it's a, it's a lifestyle for people nowadays. Yeah, here at Hell City, we have we have both tattooing vendors, we have live painters as well, and then we have a lot of like lifestyle vendors as far as merchandise, clothing, uh, body jewelry, just a good variety. So we also have shopping for the general, you know, the people that want to collect their uh, their art and their you know tattoo clothing and stuff like that too. So it's a it's a wide range of stuff that we have here at Hell City. It's not just tattooing. There's a lot of unique events that we have here that you won't find at any other convention. Uh, the future of Hell City is just to keep expanding, keep bringing great shows with great entertainment, uh, top-notch, world-class artists, and uh, keep going. There's a festival for everything! Guacamole, tacos. Hey, I wonder if there's a festival for carne asada. Yeah, I'm sure there is. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back with more Savita and Rock the Rock right after these messages. A burrito festival. Oh my gosh, breakfast burritos! Oh my gosh, yes! Papas con queso. Somebody do this. Welcome back to Suvida, coming to you today from Rock the Guac, a competition to find the best guacamole here in Arizona. But there's another event coming to town that everyone is looking forward to, the Arizona Taco Festival. I go to it every year, and the man that knows about it all is David Taita. Hi. But David, before we talk tacos, I gotta ask you, what does Rock the Guac benefit? Uh, it's called Free Arts for Abused Children of Arizona. This is such a great charity. I love it. Yes, them. sounds yeah. like a great idea. Okay, so now we gotta get back to the tacos. Tell me about the Arizona Taco Festival. <laughs> this is crazy. So this event is going into its eighth year. What? Last year we had over 35,000 people who ate over 150,000 tacos. That many tacos? It's so crazy, right? About 60 restaurants, food trucks, caterers, 
So the event has grown so much, that's why we have something like Rock the Guac, the benefits charity, a little more intimate. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> I yeah. love it. Okay, so what's new this year at the Arizona Taco Festival? Uh, okay, so in the past, if you've gone, you've bought tokens, and it's been, you've used the tokens around the festival. Yes. You've probably waited in some lines oh, for those right. tokens. It's been like our number one complaint, fixed. This year, we're doing RFID wristbands. So you link a credit card, you go around, you're, you're buying tacos, you're buying margaritas, you're having a good time, easy. So it's like smooth. <laughs> that is genius. Yeah. All right, so if people want more details about the Arizona Taco Festival. AZTacoFestival.com. All right, there you have it, easy enough. Tacos and guacamole, well that helps preserve our culture. Fortunately for Arizona's wildlife, there's people that help them preserve that too. a great horned owl that was stuck in a barbed wire fence. His wings were stuck there, he couldn't get out. And I didn't know what to do. He was clacking his beak at me, his little talons were going, and I was scared. So I actually called Liberty Wildlife out to help me help this bird. And uh, one of the staff members came out, rescued the bird, got his wing untangled from the barbed wire, and then I actually started volunteering right away and followed up on that story and watched the owl heal and then eventually got to be part of the release. Liberty Wildlife is a nonprofit rescue, rehabilitation, education, and conservation center. Our main focus is to take in sick and injured and orphaned wildlife with the hope to return them back to the wild. Most of the animals that Liberty Wildlife takes in are birds. People know us for taking care of songbirds all the way up through raptors uh, like eagles, hawks, and owls but we are able to take in mammals and reptiles. Pretty much everything that you can find in your backyard, we'll take in and try and find a way to release back into the wild or find a proper home for it. People are seeing wildlife every single day, and luckily we have a lot of great citizens around here that help them out and bring them to us. So here we have Carl, and he's a Gunnison's Prairie Dog, which is a prairie dog that comes from a little bit further north in Arizona. Uh, he was actually brought to us with head trauma. We didn't think he was gonna make it, he was really down. The staff was able to bring him back to life. Uh, he's non-releasable though, because he does still get tremors occasionally, uh, so he wouldn't be able to survive and fend for himself out in the wild. So he's, he's here in rehab, getting better, and uh, hopefully he'll be on our education permit someday. This is Tucker, and he is a great horned owl. He actually was hit by a car and spent the night in the grill of the car. The person who hit him didn't realize that he was there, went in for the night, went to bed. Woke up the next morning to drive away and saw this poor owl still alive. And so he suffered some head trauma and also a broken wing and leg. He can't be released. He uh, is compromised and can't survive well in the wild. Uh, but now he's one of our education ambassadors. <laughs> This is Aurora and she's a bald eagle. Uh, she was actually born out in the wild in Wisconsin and got a, an injury to her eye. She got a stick in the eyeball. She's blind in her left eye and without that dual vision she doesn't have the ability to hunt. Now we'll be able to keep Aurora here for the rest of her life while she continues to educate the public of Arizona. The mission of Liberty Wildlife is to nurture the nature of Arizona. And that shouldn't just be Liberty Wildlife's mission, that should be everybody's mission. With Liberty Wildlife out there educating people and people learning about us, we really do have a shot with having people learn how important nature is and how they need to protect the planet we live on. Now I think we just need something refreshing. Oh yeah. Maybe yeah. a margarita. Or two. We'll be right back with more Subida after we sample these margaritas. Hey, welcome back to Vida. I'm JR Cardenas. And I am Vanessa Ramirez. Today we are rocking the guac here on a sous vide. And JR, take a look around. Yeah. Everything in this room is what makes life in Arizona so unique and wonderful. It's definitely clear that our culture is what gives this state its spiciness, its food, and its flavor. Yep, that's right. And that's why the film industry loves us. You know, we could be discovered by Hollywood any minute now. Well, then you better take that guacamole off your chin. So the Hansen Film Institute was established through the gift of a donor in 2002 and then it was formally approved by the Arizona Board of Regents in 2005. And we have a couple of special focuses. One is Native American filmmaking and the other is Mexican filmmaking. So with our focus in Mexican filmmaking, we produce Tucson Cine Mexico. 
um, and we also support Mexican filmmakers who want to film here in Arizona. I um, mean, we also support uh, Hispanic students that are in the film and television program at the University of Arizona. So one of our international partners is Ambulante Traveling Documentary Film Festival, which was a film festival that was started by producer Pablo Cruz and uh, actors Gael Garcia Bernal and Diego Luna. And so when we show documentary films during Tucson Cine Mexico, those are in collaboration often with Ambulante Documentary Film Festival. And then a nice example of how we've helped students get a foot in the door at the industry is that we um, sent a group of them down to Mexico to work on Diego Luna's film, Cesar Chavez. So that was a great experience for them. We have a shared goal with Film Tucson, which is to increase production here in Tucson and Arizona. One of our signature programs each year is Tucson Cine Mexico, which is uh, a film festival that celebrates contemporary Mexican film. It's the first and the longest running festival of Mexican film in the United States. Um, and it takes place in March of every year. It's free to the public. Um, we have a lot of, we have a very diverse audience. We have around about 65% Hispanics and uh, Everything is conducted in both Spanish and English. So even if you don't speak Spanish, you can attend the festival and uh, enjoy everything on offer. So um, as a non-Spanish speaker coming to Tucson Cine Mexico, um, all of the films are subtitled in English and all of the introductions are given both in English and in Spanish. And the filmmakers who we invite to the festival always speak in English and Spanish or if they only speak Spanish then we have, them, we have a translator to translate them into English. Uh, it's always free. Uh, the, the festival takes place in South Tucson at Harkins Tucson Spectrum 18, um, which is a big multiplex and uh, we get audiences lining up around the block to attend our films. And we will have special screenings right here at the Box Theatre. Well, we've had a lot of fun here today. And a lot of food here at Rock the Guap. We want to thank the crew for inviting us here today. Yes, definitely. We want to congratulate this year's winner. You know, Dare, I don't know how they picked just one. Everything was delicious. Well, are you ready for round number two? Let's do it. Yeah, Woo! baby. We're going to go to Otro Café in Gallo Blanco and enjoy these. Yeah, we'll see you next time on Subida. Subida. Hey, Dare, they have these hangover pills for those margaritas we drank earlier. Three more margaritas Woo! to go, please. <laughs> Cheers.